Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from the 1959 Candidates Tournament. On the white end, 16-year-old Bobby Fischer, and he's up against the 22-year-old Mikhail Tall. Opening-wise, open Sicilian, Nidorf. Okay, if you happen to be a teacher listening in right now and you're looking for a good game for your students, one that highlights this thematic d5 pawn break in the Sicilian, I think this is one to consider sharing. What we're going to observe in this game is a battle over the d5 square. White essentially loses central control, and once this d5 break is in, watch how quickly the white position collapses. Watch how quickly the game can collapse when you lose central control. In this game, we have bishop c4, move 6. More development for each side. Bishops on a more secure square. Bishops out. Both queens are out. This is already a time-sensitive position. Move 10. Fisher castles. Now, when I share the graph at the end of the video... One that highlights inaccuracies, mistakes, blunders, castles is considered an inaccuracy. This is only a 33 move game. Move 10, what is considered best, is f5. To, in other words, increase the pressure on e6. It's hit now three times. How should black react to this best move, f5? Well, black can't defend it for a third time. There's only two on it. Can't add a third defender. But you could influence one of the aggressors, not the bishop, but the knight, by developing. And we're going to get this knight exchange in, and the pressure is reduced. Now we're down to two attackers, and we still have the two defenders here. Now with this, var with this variation I'm highlighting, you'll notice what piece or what pawn hasn't moved this guy the e6 pawn has not moved has not captured this guy is still on c3 so to move the pawn or capture while this guy is on c3 you're probably asking for a problem you would really have to take great care over that d5 square if you're doing that so how else can black respond to the f5 advance well if you're capturing like this probably not good for two reasons one two these squares have opened up for the three minors what might be tempting a lot of players as black here is to play e5 this would also not be a good idea and this variation that i'm about to share with you i think does a really good job of highlighting this fight over the d5 square. It's one that black will lose. Let's see how. Knight goes back first. The knight pawn is launched to attack the knight, who is observing d5. But you'll notice white has not yet castled, and can consider moving a knight pawn himself. You could always go queenside castles. b4? This knight doesn't even move. White continues to press, gives up this material. The knight is rocked back. This knight is improved. The queen is rocked back. And look at this position. I would say it's a very small investment for white to get this dominant position. Look at the black pieces. They're playing on rank seven and eight. How valuable is this knight on d5? How valuable are these two white pawns positioned in black's house on the king's side? Nearby, there's already f6, which is crushing. Black is moments away from getting blasted off the board. This line right here, in this line right here, white has won the battle over the d5 square. Okay. In this game, we have castles, b5, and f5 is played only now on this move 11. What's considered best in reply to b5 is a 3 to secure the knight. You're stopping the b4 advance. 
Okay, in this game, f5 is played. The other tempting move, if you're looking from the white side here, the other tempting move is this pawn advance. This isn't winning for white, the e5 advance, so don't be tempted by this uh, double attack against the knight and the rook. The rook is basically poison. If you're playing this as white, how is it poison exactly? Some line like this. Queen takes rook, there's bishop b7, and bishop to c5, gonzo queen. Okay. In this game, it's f5. Now comes b4. The knight is kicked to the edge, and only after it is kicked to the edge, only, only after it is not on the c3 square, does black make the commitment with the e-pawn. Goes to e5. This guy can't get here. Okay. Knight goes back. What do we do from here? What's the game plan? Continue to develop. White has already lost this fight over the d5 square. This guy's going to watch from the edge the eventual d5 pawn break. Okay, we continue to develop. We also happen to be generating a threat. Needs more support, e4. Knights are connected. This move is staying out of the bishop's way. Watches over d5, also connects knights. In some cases, the knight on f6 can be removed, but it can be replaced. And it's there, once again, watching over d5. All right, from here, bishop e3. Bishop c6, two things happening. A little pressure on this knight. And a new square has opened up for the queen where she could increase the pressure on these center squares, d5 and e4. Okay, in this game, bishop f2 is played. This is one of the last chances for white to try and stay in the game. The best move here is to advance the c-pawn. It likes c4 as one of the best moves. What does this do? It fights over the d5 pawn break. And also says if you take on c3 on Passan, thank you, my knight is back in business. Okay, another point behind c4 is that this c2 square is vacant for the bishop in case black increases the pressure with queen b7. There's bishop c2. Okay, in this game, we have bishop f2 getting out of the rook's way. This is white's way to defend e4. Uh, I have a pop quiz for you. In, in this game, queen b7 is played. We get this increased pressure here, but what is the best move in reply to queen a5? What's the plan here if black goes after the knight? There's only one way to approach this as white. Only one good move here. Can you spot the move? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. White has to play a3. And if you take the knight, you have this idea. And the rook is springing to life. This is how white would get the piece back. So that resource is there for white to secure the knight. a3. All right. In this game, it's queen b7. More support needed over e4. But there were two things going on with queen b7. Hit e4 and add another piece there to get in d5. Black has enough support for it, and here we go. The position is officially collapsing for white. d5 break is in. All of this action in the center is going on. Look at the quality of the knights, the white knights. On the edge, on g3, they don't make a great impression. Okay, captures, captures, knight e4, knight f4. As soon as d5 was in on what, move 17? We're at move 19 right now. Black is the first side to establish a piece in the other side's camp. Knight is on f4, and there's other stuff going on. We got this pin against the knight, and this pressure on g2. There's no save here for white. What's tried now is c4 too late. C4 in this case does not prevent d5. We already have 
d5 in. What is it doing? It's opening up a square to watch over the knight. That's about it, though. Now comes g6. Simple plan here. This knight's in a pin. How can I attack it further? Trying to eliminate this pawn. What are your choices? In the game, we have pawn takes pawn. Any other options? If you push, we have this capture. You could get out of the pin like that, but you're out of the pin, but now this pawn is gonzo. Bishop takes, knight takes. Okay. That's not going to work out for white. Trying to play this, you're probably asking for trouble as well, <laughs> because soon you're going to have to deal with the rook coordinating on the king side. So what is tried is the capture. You could, of course, recapture towards the center, but this is tall. <laughs> he just, he's a forward thinker. I could play f5, I'm playing f5, and I'm not afraid of your g-pawn. Okay, if the pawn captures, the king hides. In this game, the pawn goes to g7. King takes pawn, there's a check thrown in, no problem. Knight c5, everything's forcing. Knight takes knight, bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop, queen c7. Eye on the knight indirectly, direct defensive e5, right around the corner, rook g8, and rook g2. White gets out of that. Trying to trade queens. Black says not so fast. I have the safer king. I'm still after g2. What's tried here is rook to e2, and knight takes rook follows. There is no... Uh, there are no good moves here for white. If you're thinking about g3, that's going to get crushed after a check and ugh, f4 is in. A fork, this file will open up. Big problems there as well. So in this game, it's rook e2, knight takes rook, bishop takes g2, knight is hit, knight takes a6. Two different checks for the queen. More accurate. Queen a7 move. If you're going to b6, you know, there's at least this move here and your queen has to react to that. So you check from a7 instead. King takes bishop. Rook check. What do you do, king? You go to the corner, you're getting hit with one of these two checks. It's a mate and two. In this game, king h3. Queen g7, looking at mate on h6. Not much you could do about that. What's tried is bishop to d1. One final move. Rook e6, and white resigns. Right around the corner, we have check. Check, check mate ideas. For instance, this. Check. Check. And checkmate. This is as far as it goes, though. Move 33. White resigns. So look at this final position. We have off the charts active black major pieces and nearly every white piece is watching from the edge. How did we get here? Well, it dates all the way back to this fight over the d5 square. It's one that white lost. Anyhow, Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.